Good afternoon to everybody and good morning to me in America. Um, my name is Olga Palinkasa Gregorian and um, I'm a senior advisor at Institute of International Education Scholar Rescue Fund. Um, Institute of International Education is an international NGO that has 400 years promoted international education as a way to achieve interconnected and peaceful world. Scholar Rescue was from the beginning at its core through assisting displaced scientists and scholars after First World and during and after Second World War and through many conflicts and crises that happened since. In 2002, IIE committed to making Scholar Rescue a permanent part of its work. So Scholar Rescue Fund was established as a fellowship uh, for scholars whose lives are in danger anywhere in the world to go somewhere else in the world where they can continue to teach, research, and study in safety. Uh, it is initially a one-year fellowship with possibility of extension to another year. Uh, so far, Scholar Rescue Fund has placed almost 800 scholars from 59 countries in partnership with 400 host institutions in 44 countries. Uh, we at Scholar Rescue Fund recognize that in recent years, a uh, very important number of scholars we place are not able to return to their country of origin and have to stay and reestablish their careers for longer term in their host country. Uh, therefore, we realize that tailored assistance and resources are needed uh, to help fellows prepare for the fierce competition that they're facing post-fellowship. In 2017, uh, IIE Scholar Rescue Fund launched the Partnerships for Scholar Advancement, which is a network of partner organizations and individuals committed to providing our fellows with opportunities for career advancement and professional development during and after the fellowship. PSA uh, connects partnering scholars to opportunities through a network of institutions and individuals uh, across academic, uh, nonprofit, and corporate sectors. <clears throat> the institutions uh, who are partners, among others, are National Academy of Science and AAAS, who help us promote our work and also help us recruit more um, uh, individual partners. Uh, Midwest Political Science Association and uh, American Academy of Religion uh, <clears throat> among other uh, academic societies offer free uh, membership and attendance to conference for our scholars. Um, we partner with Coursera uh, through their program Coursera for Refugees. They are offering free access to all their content to our scholars, um, current fellows and alumni. Um, Two uh, law firms, Zach Kingham and Wilkie Farr and Gallagher, offer pro bono legal advice to our scholars. We partner with many NGOs that do similar work as us, such as Upwardly Global and Talent Beyond Boundaries, ICTC from Canada, and Global Young Academy. Uh, Global Young Academy uh, provides mentors to our scholars uh, uh, from their membership. Uh, to our scholars and to SAR scholars. Uh, in Europe, we collaborate with GREAT, of course, and uh, also with BRIDGE program. BRIDGE offers localized guidance to refugee researchers in the European research here. But most important um, are our individual uh, partners who um, do uh, offer their expertise and advice to our scholars through advisorships. Advisorship is one-on-one -on -one relationship between advisor and our fellow with the purpose of supplementing the fellow's efforts in career advancement and professional development. Advisorships are among the most effective ways for displaced fellows to work through impediments to their securing long-term position and opportunities in academic and related sectors. Um, advisors' roles are different, and among others are assisting with editing CVs and cover letters and conducting mock interviews. 
The advisors can also review teaching statements, grant applications, postdoctoral applications, and other academic writing. Um, advisors provide career advice and guidance. They introduce fellows to discipline-specific connections that extend their networks. Advisors can bring attention to academic fellowship uh, publishing opportunities and job postings uh, in the fellow academic field. Uh, advisors can help fellow build, build his or her academic presence by sharing information about relevant conferences and memberships in academic societies. So working with scholars for about two years <clears throat> directly, we have, we have learned that those scholars who managed to reestablish their careers in exile have some things in common. Um, and those things are, first of all, the legal status. The scholar's legal status is resolved, or in process of being resolved, which allows scholars to work legally in the host country. Um, the scholar can read, write, and speak uh, an advanced level in the target language. Uh, he or she also submits academic articles, books, ch book chapters, book manuscripts, for publication in the target language. The scholar um, has a clear vision of the future. So he or she knows what goals uh, he or she wants to achieve and has a clear vision of path forward. He or she knows that uh, to apply for fellowship and research and teaching position is aware of potential obstacles and is ready to work to find a way to overcome them. The scholar is optimistic but realistic and prepared to move to an alternate plan if the first path is not possible. The scholar is mindful of all the possibilities. Uh, the scholar is mindful of the possibility that it will take longer than two years on the fellowship to attain his or her goal. It is important to recognize this early in the fellowship. Develop a vision of where the scholar sees himself or herself in the next five years and do as much groundwork and planning during the fellowship so that the essential aspects of reaching that goal are well established. The scholar frequently attends meetings and events related to his or her work and most importantly stays in touch with new contacts who offer help and connection. The scholar accepts additional responsibilities and pursues extracurricular opportunities that have the potential of bring professional advancement, extend his or her network, and ultimately lead to employment. I'd like to uh, give you a short story about um, one of our scholars who was invited to uh, participate in this webinar, but unfortunately could not make it because um, he had to travel. His name is Ahmed Sadidin, and he is um, IISRF alumnus from Syria. Uh, he is an agronomist who undertook uh, SRF fellowship from 2013 to 2016 at the University of Florence. Post-fellowship, uh, he was consultant with FAO, uh, Food Agriculture Organization in Rome, and he recently became a staff economist at FAO's regional office in Cairo. Uh, Ahmed says that uh, the way he got his first engagement with FAO was through a connection. Networking, in his opinion, was the key to success, and nowadays is an essential skill without which no one will be successful regardless whether you are displaced or living and working in your country. Um, I have uh, now given you some overview of um, what we have accomplished through partnerships with Scholar Advancement, but I would like to here to mention a couple of points that uh, we have not managed to develop so far. Um, those are, first of all, uh, psychosocial support are uh, trying to organize uh, access to counselors who have experience working with refugees and immigrants. Um, we are trying to uh, work with our host universities and encourage them to be more engaged with, um, uh, with 
are scholars preparing them for post fellowship through their career services and other services that, that exist on campus. And we would like to um, develop more partnerships with private sector and startups. So um, this would be a, a short overview of what we do so far. I do welcome your questions. Um, just uh, to end my presentation, um, for what it's worth for those participants who are themselves refugee scholars, I would like to share a, a little bit of my story. I was a, a, a second year student refugee from Bosnia and by a turn of faith, I ended up in Spain in Madrid in 1993. I did not know any Spanish and I did not have any friends or family who could help me. But I managed to get into um, Complutense University uh, without having any university transcripts because they were impossible to get as my university was on the um, sniper alley, so nobody could get to it to get my transcripts. Um, and I also did not have to do the entrance exam. Um, what happened was that I told my story to people and they decided to help. They decided to help because I was so determined to succeed and also because I never assumed that because of what I went through, they, that I'm entitled to anything. So they still in me the drive and the positive attitude and that motivated them to help. I really never had to ask. Um, so I always say I'm where I am because of kindness of strangers and that is very true. Um, so please, um, any questions are welcome. I'll try to answer them all and uh, thank you so much.